Okay. Okay, everybody, welcome, welcome. I'm Kirsten Karchmer, and I want to welcome you to this one hour long ish class about how to use moxibustion to improve your fertility, ovulation, energy, and a few other things. Now, when I started thinking about how to teach you guys how to use moxibustion, it's really a tool that's used by acupuncturists, but we can teach you how to do it in a self care way. In order to not make work, more work for myself, I went and I watched a bunch of YouTube videos to see what was out there, and I realized there just wasn't enough information out there to actually really inform you how to use it correctly, under what circumstances should you use it, how to find the points and what points to use, and, and how to care for moxa so that it doesn't burn your house down or smoke you out too bad. So that's what we're going to be covering today. I'll go in a little bit more detail in the next slide. Um, let's see if I can do that. Okay, well, let me get from there then. Okay, so again, we're going to talk about you know, what is moxa and what is moxibustion comes from traditional Chinese medicine. How it can affect your fertility and improve ovulation, how you can use it to improve energy, how to use moxa correctly so that you don't hurt yourself because it is really strong. Anything that's strong enough to help you is strong enough to hurt you if it's used incorrectly. So that's going to be a big focus. Um, how to use moxibustion to help raise your temperatures after ovulation so that you secrete abundant progesterone, how to improve blood flow to the ovaries, which has been shown clinically to improve FSH, AMH, and ovarian response and in vitro fertilization cycles. Really important how to extinguish moxa correctly and how to store it in your house. So that's what we'll be talking about. Um, and we'll have a time at the end to ask questions. And if you're listening to the recording, jump to the community. That's going to be the best place to ask questions or come back into the live. I'm there almost every single night at five central. So this is for you if you're on a journey to get or stay pregnant, if you're not ovulating, or if you have any period problems that you want to solve. Moxibustion can be really effective tool, one of your tools. Remember, there isn't ever just one cause of the problem. And more importantly, there is never one intervention. The reason why the system that we use at Conceivable is so effective is because we find all of the problems in the intersection of those problems. And at the same time, then we come up with an intervention that attacks all of those problems at many different levels. And so you get the problem changing quickly with many layers of intervention. And Moxa is one of the tools that you can use. If you don't know me, a lot of people who will be here um, do know me from TikTok and live, but um, I'm a world-renowned reproductive acupuncturist. In fact, I was one of the first reproductive acupuncturists in North America. You can hear interviews with me in over 200 podcasts. Um, I was the former president of the American Reproductive uh, Oriental Reproductive Medicine Society and have lectured globally on the future of women's health with the application of technology, especially in the world of women's health and infertility. So I know a little bit about what's going on in the fertility world. What I'm always trying to do is find the intersection of Western medicine and Chinese medicine and how do we find the place where we can be most effective when we borrow the best of Chinese medicine, the best of Western medicine, the best of mind body, of behavioral science, of nutrition. When we do that, we proved in the conceivable pilot that we can get exponential improvement in the likelihood of getting pregnant. One of the tools I'm going to teach you about to use to do that at home for yourself is moxa. So as you can see in this picture, it looks like a cigar that's smoking, and I have some here. Um, I'm switching back and forth between so I can see my screen. Okay, so this is a box of moxa, and when you order, you can order it for me. You can get it on Amazon. I think I try to always have the cheapest price. Um, you'll get this box. It'll look like there's a bunch of cigars in there, and, um, and it smells just like real bad weed. Um, so it looks like a cigar, like it's very pungent. It's made of, well, we haven't got that part. So it's basically been a practice that's been used in traditional Chinese medicine for over 3,000 years. Um, what's really nice about it is you can apply heat to acupuncture points just in the same way that you would apply a needle to an acupuncture or, or massage. But because this herb, artemisia, which we'll talk about in a minute, when you burn it, it's very smoky and the smoke is actually very invigorating, not necessarily a, a lovely way. Um, and it's very invigorating to the point, but it doesn't cause any skin trauma if you're careful and you use it correctly, which we're going to be talking about, which really one of the reasons why I'm doing this whole thing, especially some of the points around your belly. So um, let's look at the next slide. Okay, so moxibustion and moxa, 
uh, can come in many different forms. So if you've seen movies, you may have seen a variety of different um, presentation. We have it in poll, like this is what this is called poll. If you look carefully at this picture with the black background in the middle, um, that basically that's a picture of the woman's abdomen. She has a needle, this is right next to her belly button. She has a needle sticking in, and then there's a little ball of moxa. It's kind of sticky and wooly. And then basically what you'll do in the office is you'll burn, <laughs> it's kind of scary for the patient. You put this little cotton ball basically of moxa on the needle and then you catch it on fire and it starts to smoke like crazy. And you can see it in the other picture, this is on someone's back. Um, and it basically warms the needle. So if you insert the needle you know, relatively deep, you can actually cause per pervasive warming and invigoration with this. It's very effective. Um, some of the at-home tools that you can use are these little stick-ons. It's like a little piece of moxa, and that's a sticker at the bottom. Um, they can be effective. It's expensive. It's kind of not very environmentally friendly, um, and these can burn you. So be really careful with these. They even, this is just because I'm a dog lover, they even do um, moxa bustion on pets. Actually, traditional Chinese medicine is super effective for a variety of uh, veterinary problems. Um, let's see. So this is it. It looks sort of like dandelion leaves, but it's actually the plant artemisia. It grows in Texas, at least I don't. That's where I live. Um, it does grow wild. It's a little bit different. What grows in Texas, um, and so basically they harvest the fresh herb and then dry it. And as it dries, it has a little bit of sticky stuff on it. So then it becomes a little. Um, the leaves curl up and it becomes like a wool sort of. In fact, when it's in a little bag, which is frequently how an acupuncturist might store it, it does look like a little dime bag of weed and when you open it it does smell like weed and I will tell you a funny story I used to be married to a also a reproductive acupuncturist and he was kind of a hippie and he was up in Connecticut or something and he got pulled over and he had like a gallon he did a lot of moxa in his practice he had a gallon ziploc bag full of moxa and these like kind of hillbilly cops pulled him over and they were like you know, what are you doing? I'm sure he talked some crap to them and they said, get out. And I think he had a sticker or like gun, like, you know, love, make love, not war, not guns, all this kind of stuff. So they already targeted him. And so they were like, we're going to search your vehicle. They search and they find this gallon bag, which they think is weed. And it's only moxa. It's like $15 a moxa or something. And they're like, you're going to jail, son. And they call the F the DEA and everything. He has to wait five hours. DA comes out with the drugs and they're like, man, that's mox. It's nothing. And then he got to go free. So um, just don't be alarmed. Like when you, when you can't smoke it, if you try to smoke it, you will be very sorry. It will make you throw up. It's very not smokable. So don't, even though it looks and smells a little bit like marijuana, it's totally legal. Um, it just happens to have that very aromatic and pungent. I probably, Artemisia is probably in the, some family that cannabis is or something. And it has a very similar smell. It's only one thing, so ingredients, one thing. What's it good for? It's good for a lot of things. It's good, it's missing my nose. Um, it's been clinically shown to be really effective for hypertension, for a variety of post-stroke conditions, um, for fatigue, which we are gonna talk about because a lot of people are struggling to get pregnant, have fatigue issues. Um, but it's also been shown to be really effective in rat studies, just to be clear, to the, how they did moxibustion on rats. I don't know, I mean, I actually do know, but um, they had little tiny, like they look like incense punks that they used and they shaved them. Um, but it has shown like when they compared it to like clomid stimulation, other uh, stimulatory pharmacologic interventions, um, the moxa treatments outperformed it in terms of lowering FSA, uh, lowering FSH, raising FSA, lowering FSH, raising AMH, and impacting like the blood supply to the ovary. So why this is important and why moxa probably helps so much is as your ovaries age, which all of our ovaries are aging, what happens is if this is your ovary, the blood supply, the peripheral blood supply starts to diminish. So over time, as you get close to 40, and sometimes it happens earlier for some reason, this blood supply starts to decline. So the blood that's getting to the ovary to nourish it decreases and the ovary actually starts to shrivel and shrink a little because it's not getting enough um, blood and nutrients. And um, But any place you do moxa or needle, you are going to for sure improve blood circulation. So what they were doing is they were doing um, a moxibustion right on top of the ovary, like through the skin, obviously, and it's able to increase blood circulation, which basically when you increase the blood circulation of the ovary, you basically cause the ovary to wake up a little bit. It's kind of imagine like a droopy old plant. And then, you know, you're like, this is going to go in the trash. And then you start watering it just a little bit and feeding it a little bit. And a, like a week later, it's like, Dah! 
this is kind of what happens to the ovary. Now, it's not a panacea. It's not what this is. Again, one of the things that we want to be doing, if we're going to just put every egg in the basket to improve our egg quality, improve ovarian. And this study was actually done in studies where they were trying to improve outcomes for in vitro fertilization studies. So um, it can be really effective. So it's helpful for ovulate, all issues, ovulations for PCOS, for energy production, for pain, you can use this for dysmenorrhea. I'll tell you the points you can use for that as well. Dysmenorrhea means painful periods, PCOS. And I think there's one more, but I'll remember when I look at the screen. There they are, energy, ovulation, PCOS, and ovarian function. So we're gonna start with the points. I'm just gonna do an overview. And um, so, so first we're gonna look at energy. We're gonna find um, the points first of all, and then you're gonna do this every single day for 10, 10 minutes. And I'm gonna, we're gonna show you exactly how to do it um, at the end, but we're gonna just go over um, just these instructions first, and you'll you'll have this recording, so you'll be able to look back and find what you want to do if you're whatever you're trying to accomplish. But uh, make sure that you're using only these points that you locate the points correctly, and that you do it for the amount of time. So if it says to do daily and you miss a few days, that's okay. If you can do it at least three times per week, it will make a difference. And when I say, see, I've given you two points, so you're gonna and and like. REN8 is basically your belly button, but stomach 36 is a point on your leg. There are two points, which means there's one on your left and one on your right. What I would do is in the 10 minutes is I would do like five minutes in the belly button and then split the five minutes between one leg and the other leg. Now I'm gonna go through all of these and then we're gonna go back and find all the points together. All right, if you wanna do anything in terms of improving ovulation, you're gonna use the points Zigong, Ren8, Spleen9. Again, we're gonna find the points after we get through these four sections right now. You see here it's important. We only wanna do this cycle day one through 14. And the reason for that is we wanna make sure that we're stimulating, we're following the cycle, right? We wanna stimulate the ovaries a little bit at the time that they need and want to be stimulated. And then we let them rest once ovulation has occurred and we see what happens whether you have a positive pregnancy test. Again, this is for 10 minutes a day approximately. Again, if you miss a day here or there, it's not gonna kill you. So don't, don't get sucked into that um, mindset of perfectionism here. Do the best that you can. Any that you do is gonna be better than none, but just divide up the 10. Okay, Zigong is, that's going to be two points, Ren 8, that's the belly button, and Spleen 9, that's on the leg. So you have about five. So the one on for ovulation, Zigong, are the points over the ovaries. So you're going to want to really have at least five of those minutes uh, alternating between that, and then you can alternate between Ren 8 and Spleen 9. Don't let the numbers and everything confuse you because you're only going to be working on one thing at a time. And once you get used to it, it'll be super duper easy. PCOS, anything related to PCOS, um, you can do this daily, every other day. The research showed um, three times per week was what they did in the study to improve ovulation. Um, spleen six, Zigong, and spleen nine. Um, again, you can do it daily. You're, since you're gonna do it every single day of the month, you don't need to do it as long. You can do it up to 10 minutes, but I wouldn't do it any longer than that. All right, so you're a person who is having low AMH, high FSH, you're preparing for an IVF cycle that you've had poor stimulation in the past. Um, all of these, you want to improve like ovarian response. You've had um, IVF and you've had poor egg quality. Egg quality is really tricky. This will not, this alone will not fix egg quality. Remember, I cannot stress, you want a multifactorial approach to a multifactorial problem, meaning infertility, egg quality, every single thing that we're talking about today they're caused by many, many diet, lifestyle, behavioral, environmental factors, and physical factors that come together to either make you more or less fertile. This is what we work on in the Conceive Report, identifying what these are, and then what are all the interventions that you can do to improve that. Remember, don't just say like, oh, I'm just gonna do MOXA and that's gonna do it all, and then you may get disappointing results. It's when you combine all of those interventions at once that you get unbelievable results. So like in the pilot we did for Conceivable, the women doing the program increased the likelihood of conception by between 150 and 260 percent over four months, right? The likelihood of natural conception. An IUI increases the likelihood of getting pregnant by about 11 to 13 percent. So exponentially higher. And then the side effects of when you have this multidisciplinary intervention, you have better energy, you ovulate better, 
your PMS goes away, your cramping goes away, your anxiety gets better, your relationship with your mate gets better because you feel better, your temperatures regulate, your cycle regulates, your cervical discharge gets better. So everything, when you treat everything as a whole system, everything has to start moving as a system, which means everything starts to improve. Okay, so now I've mentioned all these points, and you're like, I didn't even know these points don't mean anything to me. This is how I was when I was in Chinese medicine school. Um, so we're gonna, the first ones are for REN4 and REN8. So REN8 is super duper easy. It's your belly button. Now, when you're doing moxibustion on your belly button, that is some sensitive tissue. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do the moxibustion when we go through the location. But um, you wanna just be really careful not to overheat it because that skin can burn and then it can be really uncomfortable and it can get really infected very easily because especially if you have like a little bit of like an any that tissue in there can get really infected if it gets burned so really treat that like the skin of your labia like how careful you would be if you were doing this on the like inner skin of your labia okay now ren4 they're calling it cv4 in my picture i didn't even realize that ren and cv is the same thing cv stands for conception vessel right so ren in chinese medicine means conception so Easy to find REN8, that's in the belly button. I'm touching my belly button as if you could see it. REN4 is basically, if you first find your pubic bone, right? That's like right where your like the hard part where your pubic hair is. Um, and then you find your belly button. So the easiest thing is to find the midpoint between that. So you'll find your belly button and you'll find the point between it, find the midpoint. And then you're gonna go down about a third more. And that's where REN4 is. And so if you're not sure, you're gonna just paint with your moxa above the skin and a little bit wider space. Um, it's not that hard to find. And if you're close enough, it's going to be cl perfectly clinically effective. If you're a little bit high or a little bit low, it's not going to do anything bad. Next, stomach 36. This is an interesting point because this is a point that strongly improves digestion in order to prove, improve energy. And when you use stomach 36, they say that you can be exhausted and not be able to walk at all and needle stomach 36, and you should be able to walk three, mi three more miles. So they call it like three miles walk. There's a few different translations, Zusan Li. So you see stomach 36, it's the red point. The circle at the top of this picture, let me use my little thing. The circle here, this is your knee, your kneecap, your patella. And this bone down the center, that's the tibia, that's the hard bone. All right. The point is a little misleading because it's making it look like it's over here. You're going to take your hand and you're going to put the edge of it right under your kneecap right here. And then right next to your pointer finger next, pretty close to the patella, but not on top of it. You're going to find a little depression. This one, you really want to find the point. And so if you're watching along, you can just try to find this point right now for yourself. You, if you just very softly run your fingers over where you think, It'll be like firmer and then there'll just be a slight depression. Remember, this point is on both sides. So try to locate it um, on both sides. If you're having a trouble, this is a good time to ask a question because this one, you kind of have to feel your way. Pop back over and see if we have any questions. Okay, great. No questions so far. I actually want to close that chat. Okay, spleen six. This picture also makes it look more um, confusing than it has to be too. But if you know the, an the anatomy, this is the inside of your knee. And right here, this is that little bony protuberance on the, your, it's like your ankle bone that sticks out. And if you find that first, there's a bone that shoots out of here, right? That's the, and the, this is the tibial crest right here. And then you have your tendon, your Achilles tendon back here. Just like we did with stomach 36 with your hand, three sun, that's a measurement in Chinese medicine, you're gonna put your hand with starting with your index finger, your pointer finger right here. And then you're gonna have your fingers going up this way. Your pinky is gonna be right there. And this is on the bone. So if you just go just on the edge of the bone and you start pressing around, oh shoot. You start pressing around kind of firmly on the other side of the bone, you're gonna find a very tender spot. Every single person who's struggling to get pregnant is gonna have a very tender spot here. So if you're if you if you're not sure about the point and it doesn't feel tender, start palpating around, pressing around, and you'll be able to find that location super easily. Remember the points are not as tiny as they are on here. They're about the size between a dime and a quarter. So you have a little margin of error here without like being too freaked out about it. 
Now, if we look, the last point is spleen nine. So again, we're in the inside of the leg here. Just This is just the musculature that's been shown here and the bone. So here's your knee. And if you look, here's your calf. And then there's like this little hook in here. I don't know how else to say it. And if you start palpating around, pressing around on the edge of the bone, there's a little crook and it's, it'll be, it'll be mushy and you'll be able, when you press on it, it'll feel also very tender. So see if you can locate that point right now. And if you have any questions, um, pop it into the chat for me. And I'll check. Okay, great. The last one, which is in the most important, which I couldn't find a better image, and um, I didn't want to take a picture of my own stomach, is a uh, zigong. They're you know calling the real Chinese name is zigong shui, which means palace of the child. So as you see, we always use this the the sun three sun as you'll always see is like the measurement between the index finger and the pinky finger. So you find the belly button first, right here. And then you're gonna use your hand to measure three sun out, so the distance between the pinky and the index finger. And then you're gonna go straight down. Now, this is your pubic bone right here. So just like we found Ren 4, it's just about lateral to Ren 4, but three sun over. And um, so remember, this is your pubic bone. I would say it's like about an inch-ish above there. You're not going to feel anything, so you're going to have to trust that you're right on top of your ovaries. Remember, you can use this point as being about as big as a quarter, and um, and that's it, this one's very easy to find. Mostly, you want to go to the belly button, measure your hand width over, go down, find the pubic bone, and then out to here. Oh, that was in there twice. Okay, so before we start talking about safety, I want to show you how you're going to use this. Okay, so remember you open your box. This will last like a few days, depending on how long you're doing it. You're going to see it has like a, it has a paper, this paper that's like the label on the outside of it, so I can get that closer. So what I like to do is either, I don't take the whole paper off because this actually keeps it fresh, but I'm going to use probably this much when I do my treatment. So you can either just put your finger in it and like, push it out like that, or you can just peel the paper off. If you leave the paper on, it's really hard to light the moxa. And, um, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to light it. Now, I'm going to see how I can do this with my, I'm in my kitchen here. So if you don't have a gas stove, this is a lot harder to do. So what I would do is I would go to um, the gas station or a head shop where you can buy one of those lighters that's like a little or if you have like a um, one of those uh, torches that like it strong fire comes out, it's just a little bit hard to light. So let's see if we can do this here. Look at that. That's amazing. Kitchen with Kirsten. Okay, so you can see I'm holding it in the fire. It's not like a candle. So you have to light the herb on fire. So you see, it's not even lighting. So holding it in the fire, holding it in the fire. Like I'm holding it, as you can see, directly in the fire. It's okay if it catches on fire. Okay, so that's good. All right, so now we're lit. You can see, let me see if I can blow on it. So when you're blowing on it, you wanna keep blowing, see if I can show that, it's not showing. When you blow on it, it will turn bright orange. And what you wanna do is get it so that the whole tip is really burning. Okay, that's good. Now, remember Artemisia burns, it's 1700 degrees. This is very hot. This is why I wanna teach this class to make sure that you're using it safely. I'm going to show on my hand how you're going to use the point. So imagine this is the point that we're going to do. We're going to imagine a quarter size here. We're going to use the mock set. We're going to use it about two fingers. Let me see if I can. Going to like measure about two fingers above the point. See, smoke is everywhere. Let's see, okay, two fingers above. 
and I'm gonna hold it. Let's see if I can give you a good, yeah. I'm gonna just hold it about two fingers over and I'm literally just coloring in the air, not on my skin, back and forth and back and forth. And you're gonna keep it over the same thing. And then suddenly it's gonna get hot as heck. It's gonna get like, ah, hot. So pull it up and use your hand to cover the point. Hold it for a second until it calms down, go back at it. So you're gonna stay on one point time. Don't rope, you know, you have three points to do. Don't rotate, point, point, point. You're gonna stay on one. Basically what you're trying to do is fill it up. So what you'll start to notice is when you're doing the moxa at first, it may take a, especially on your belly, especially if you have like really low temperatures on your umbilicus or on zigong on your stomach, you might be like, it's just never getting, don't, don't bring it closer. That's a different therapy. When you bring it really closer, you're, you're dispersing, you're moving up. When we leave it a little bit farther up, we're actually co collecting energy in the point. I know as someone who's very scientific, I just don't know a scientific way to explain that. So here we are again. We're just coloring, coloring, coloring. Oh, that gets too hot. Hold it. Okay, cooled off, back. Color and just set a timer. Keep going, keep going. Okay, next side. So if I was doing that point, I'd go over, now I do it on the other. So you, if you're doing like stomach 36 on your leg, first you're gonna do it on the leg on the one foot, then you're gonna, I mean that leg, and then you're gonna do it on the other side, then you're gonna go to the belly button, then you're gonna go to zigong. Now, these are a little bit hard to extinguish, and what I usually do, they have little extinguishers. I just hate for y'all to buy more stuff than you have to buy. You can buy one online. They're like $15 though. Um, they're like little chrome things. If you really want one, I can order you one. This is what I do. I fill this little thing up with a tiny bit of water. And then essentially I'm gonna just, I can't show you. Literally I put like, see it's out. Now, <sighs> smells so bad. So if you can do this outside, it's a good idea. The smell will dissipate. But like in the winter, I have to do this, um, you know, in the house. If you have a garage, that's a great place to do it. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is you want to store, once you've extinguished it, you want to store this outside. The reason for that is sometimes you think it's been extinguished and it just hasn't. And you want to store it like this. So in a glass jar, something that's heat proof, that's not going to break. Um, probably in my whole life, 10 times I thought it was extinguished. And when I went outside, this had burned all the way down to the bottom. So if it was here and maybe it was close to the grass, if it burned down, it could have broken off and fallen into the grass. In my opinion, the safest way to use this is after you, you put it upside down in your cup, put it outside your door. That way, if it burns down, it's just going to burn down into the cup. That's not going to be a problem. This is like $15 for like 20 of these or something. So it's not a big deal, but more, most important, um, it's really important that you're safe. So then when you go to ignite it again, the next day, what you're going to do, it's going to be cool. It's too hot to do this right now. You're going to just break off any ash. And just like when you're doing the moxibustion um, on your points every day, um, you want to keep that ember golden hot. So you're going to do it a little bit. And then each time you're going to have an ashtray or I just use that same cup that I use to like this kind of a thing to then like tamp it off really, really good. Get it red hot and keep going because you want that heat. And like I was saying before, what's really, I don't know, interesting and amazing about Mox is like what you'll notice is that after a week or two, more and more, the points are going to get hotter faster, which is really, really good. It means literally the points are starting to fill up. Like I have very low temperatures, so when if I haven't done it in a while or it's in the winter, I mean, I can just be like 15 minutes and I can't even get it to warm up. So it could take me like two or three weeks. But over time, you start to see a really impressive difference. Um, okay, I'm just looking at my notes. So um, more is not better, right? So you don't want to try to burn yourself. Like there are therapies that we do in the clinic where we'll take tiny little grains, like a rice sized grain. We put an ointment on the skin. We put a right sized grain on it. And then we catch it on the fire. We let it burn down. It actually makes us a little blister. And you can do that like 50 or a hundred times. It's very effective therapy. It does cause a blister and it will cause a scar. Theoretically, basically why that's effective is that scar causes like, just like acupuncture causes a little trauma to the point. And as that trauma is healing, as the macrophage are coming to the place where the needle was, that's actually stimulating activity at the point. The same thing, if you cause a little trauma with a little blister, 
theoretically that even lasts longer than the trauma of a needle, but it can make a scar on your skin and you can burn the bejesus out of yourself. So remember that, remember to keep your distance, like two finger widths above the point, just take your time and let it fill up. And I know that when you're trying to get pregnant that you're like, oh my gosh, well, I have to do more. I have to do more. I have to do more. Just the right amount is the right amount. Like, do not do this at two o'clock in the morning. If you miss it, like try to get 50% of the recommended and you're going to be making a significant difference. Again, even just one or two treatments a week for yourself can make a difference. So don't let this add to your fertility stress. That's not what we want to see happen. Um, just some reminders. Okay. So more is not better. Um, so you're not like, okay, well, I'm going to just hold it really, really close and like burn the shit out of it. That is not good because again, instead of attracting energy to the point you're dispersing it, we would use that for chronic pain or a trauma or things like that where we want to move the blood stasis. Um, when possible, use a fan to keep like it circulating. If you can do it in your garage or on your back porch, that's going to make it less stinky and skunky smelling. It does smell just like weed. Um, it'll make it smell better in your house. Um, another thing. So again, because it can seem like this is extinguished when it's not never put this on your kitchen cabinet because it, it, you're like, it's done. And even for a second, because if it's not, it'll burn your cabinet and maybe ruin it, especially if you have like whatever you have, like you don't want to get it burned. Um, don't put it on anything. Literally just be very fastidious. Again, why I'm teaching this class, keep it in here at all times. Even when I set mine down here, I was like, uh -uh, I'm not putting it down. I did not want this to burn my cabinet. These are all things that have happened to people I know. So um, try to avoid those kinds of stresses. Um, it just can be so effective if you know how to do it and where to do it and when to do it. Now, let's talk about, I'm sorry, I need to switch my thing. So let's talk about who shouldn't do moxa. So if you have like, high follicular phase temperatures, like your temperatures are like above 97, eight consistently after ovulation, or you have um, very scanty cervical discharge. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it, but just really pay attention. Like I would start with like half of the, if it says to do something for five days, I would start with half of that. And I would really pay attention to my follicular phase temperatures to see, are they going up? Are they coming down as a result of that? Um, you could also do it the same amount of days, but half of the amount of time. Just make sure, because if it's if you're doing especially on Zigong, Zigong should help with that. But this therapy is designed to be a warming therapy, which we don't want to overwarm in the follicular phase. If your temperatures are very high and you want to be extra careful and you're just taking a break from trying to get pregnant, you could do this cycle day 14 through 28, but I think it's better to do it cycle day follicular. And I mean, then the follicular phase. Now, additionally, if you have cancer or diabetes, if you have any kind of neuropathy or numbness, you should probably consult with a reproductive acupuncturist or just your acupuncturist and, um, and make sure that they're doing your moxa. Because again, if you have like numbness or nerve pain, you actually can make it worse. So this is what we're doing today for fertility is very safe if you just follow the protocol and the instructions that I'm giving you. Um, but each person is going to need to have specific recommendations if you're doing it for anything else on any other points. Um, I don't recommend just like hopping on YouTube and finding some other points if you've got like shoulder pain or whatever, um, because you can be using points that could be like the wrong points for your constitution, which could be injurious to you, which I don't want for you. Um, when in doubt, if you're in the conceivable program or if you've done the conceivable report, you can just email me and I can help you because I'll know your whole clinical history. Um, when in doubt, you know, you won't go wrong consulting with a licensed acupuncturist, right? Um, not a chiropractor, not a physician, right? Um, not that there's anything wrong with those guys. Those guys can do a few weekends of training versus four, or in my case, six years of training. Um, so you just want to make sure that somebody hasn't just like gotten a little bit of information about something is giving you information about how to use this therapeutically and safely and safely. Wow, we finished in 37 minutes, but now we have plenty of time for questions. What are your questions and how can I help? I'm not sure if I have any questions yet. I'm just taking in all the information. Awesome. Um, so basically understanding the safety of making sure you don't catch your house on fire and making sure you get the right points, but not getting too close to the skin. Yes. And then you want it done about uh, 
five minutes on each point or? So it depends, Ashley, on, um, so which, what would you be using it for? And we'll go back to that slide. Um, I need to do more research on my temperature and how to measure my temperatures. I have kind of been back and forth. I'm not sure if I'm doing them exactly right or if I know the exact numbers right now. Okay. Um, but we've been struggling with infertility for almost two years now, but we also haven't been actively trying since we recently had a miscarriage. Mm. I've just been trying to get to like optimal health first. Excellent. Um, and I've been working with a functional doctor on getting my labs better and all of that. So I'm trying to heal more naturally. So I'm looking for more natural approaches because we did go the Clomid route. Um, actually, it was for Mara. And on the second try, we got pregnant, but that's when I had my miscarriage. And I kind of did a deep dive of like, why did this happen? What's going on with my health? And gotcha. so I figured out, I do have a lot of things that I, that the doctors didn't check first that should have been checked before giving me that medication. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to naturally heal those things. And I do believe that my temperatures are probably lower, but I would just need to do more data on that. Gotcha. Yeah. So just to answer your question, you're like, do we do it for five minutes? So for each different thing, like if you're working on improving ovarian function, like if you have low uh, FS, low yes. then in that case, you'll go to this, you'll come back to this slide and then you'll see, you'll have your instructions. It'll be like, okay, you're going to use these three points and you have eight minutes. The okay. eight is the belly button. And so you're going to spend half of your time on the belly button and then divide your time on the other. So like two, one minute on each one of the other ones. Because okay. the points so are it's like it's eight minutes total for each round. It depends. Yeah. It depends on what you see, because then for, um, it just depends on what you're working on. So if you're doing PCOS, I mean, excuse me, if you're working on PCOS problems, like ovulatory problems, you're only going to do it every day, but you're going to only do it for five minutes versus, if you're working on uh, trigger, like trying to improve ovulation, you would do it 10 minutes, cycle day one through 14. So it just depends on what you're working on. You'll, you'll just want to check back on uh, right. specifically what are you trying to accomplish as opposed to just doing all the points. You don't want to do that. And, right. you know, in terms of um, let's do this, let's wrap up and then um, just stay on. Let me just turn off the recording. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And then I can talk to you about the BBTs because maybe everybody else doesn't want to know about that. I'm so glad that you guys were um, able to attend. And um, if you have any questions, remember, join the live at 530 every single day. Join in the con conceivable community. Happy to help in any way. And um, if you want to order your moxibustion, you can do that at conceivable.com. Uh, lowest price. So always try to find the lowest uh, best quality for the lowest price for you guys. All right. And we'll wrap it up.